both your speakers and your microphone. And then hopefully we'll be able to hear from you during the session. Maybe you have some questions, some comments. That would be great to hear. So next, if I'd like to take their magic wand to indicate the country in which they live, uh, try to be a little specific. Try to get Alberta if you're in Alberta or Calgary if you can find Calgary on the map, um, for example. So we're about there in Saskatoon, I guess. That's where our Safe Drinking Water Foundation office is based out of, is Saskatoon. I see we have people pretty much all over the prairies, um, uh, located all over the prairies. I know that there were a lot of participants who signed up from Alberta. There was a sh strong showing from Alberta teachers, so that was great to see. And it's great to see many of the others as well in Quebec, perhaps the Maritimes. Um, Someone is in Asia or I'm a little confused about it or not. Okay. So we can see that we have participants from pretty much all across Canada. So that is great to see. And someone seems to have moved the map. Um, okay. So basically, all across Canada. That's great. So next, um, we're going to have a little poll here. So I'd like everybody to click on the letter that pertains to the group that they're part of. So if they're an engineer, water treatment plant operator, community leader, government employee, or not one of the above mentioned four groups. I know most of you are teachers, um, so most of it's going to be E. Um, often we have webinars where a lot of engineers and water treatment plant operators participate. Um, because that's the nature of our organization is a lot about water treatment and effective solutions for water treatment problems. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to move on to watching um, the video crapshoot, which was directed and edited by Jeff McKay. Then Jeff McKay will answer questions about how he made his video and help some of you out with your ideas about making videos. Um, so he'll answer any questions and comment on how he made his video. And then Adam, um, our computer technician here, he is going to talk about editing videos and uploading them to YouTube. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you all on a little web tour so that you can all access the crapshoot video. So you all should, in a minute, have the crapshoot video from the National Film Board coming up on your screen. And we're all going to press play at the same time so that we can all start and finish the video at the same time. So I think it hasn't quite loaded yet. OK, so one, two, three, hopefully everybody's ready and they're not on too slow of internet um, connections. One, two, three, and we're going to start up the video. Go.
test test. test. It appears that works. I see it coming out in one channel anyway. The pressure is on to
Okay, so hopefully a lot of people have had a chance to see it now. I heard, so I saw some comments come across um, that it was sad and that it was interesting. Um, does anyone have anything that they would like to um, talk about in regards to the film? Anything they'd like to discuss? Any questions? I think everybody's gone to the washroom. I find that kids don't necessarily like really sad and depressing videos. I, I think from here, if I showed this in class, uh, we would have to focus on, OK, so where can we go from here? What can we do to make things better? Interesting, uh, because I, I guess uh, um, uh, I think that it's not necessarily such a sad story because uh, it, it, there's a lot of things that we can do. I mean, be careful about what we put down, uh, you know, sinks and drains and toilets and so on. Okay, so I saw a question come across for Jeff that asked him how long does it did it take him to make it. It also seemed like um, Jeff, do you travel to a lot of different places to make the film? Is that correct? Yeah, uh, we traveled uh, well to all the places that you saw there, and and uh, it took a long time, as you can imagine, a huge amount of research. And because there was a lot of scientific um, uh, information that had to be verified and double checked, and and we had sludge samples that we had to send out to be tested, and and so on. We had to have everything um, backed up by what we said. Um, it ended up taking, all in all, this film uh, from beginning to end. Now, this is making this for the film board, which was a total bureaucracy. Uh, it took me three years to finish it. Uh, so it's not something, and I did it a lot, a lot of it I did by myself as well. So it it was a lot of work. As you can imagine, a lot of travel, a lot of research, calling and finding people. And the tremendous amount of research that didn't end up on screen. Um, so you spend a lot of time working. Uh, and not everything that you shoot and not everything that you find out um, finds a place on screen. So that's part of the process, too. Um, I see a question from Bruno School about if you have any suggestions for students starting out making documentaries. I find the best way uh, to approach making a film is you have to look inside yourself and see if there's any particular subject that touches you personally. If you've got a story that has affected you personally, um, looking outside yourself is harder. Um, so the best thing to do is, is, to, is to ask the students to um, see if they've got a related story that, that impacted them somehow uh, and, and start from there. Does anyone have any other questions either about um, how Jeff went about making this film or about um, making their own films? I see a question now about public service announcements, how long um, public service announcements are or maybe how long they take to make. Um, I'm guessing how long they, oh, how long they take to make. I have no clue how long it takes to make a public service announcement. Um, haven't done that. Um, I can, you know, those kinds of things are very focused. Uh, there hadn't been, and as far as I know, there's not a lot of other films that deal with this particular subject. So I was doing new research for um, a film about this. So, um, but 
you know, if you're making a film that's only five minutes long, you can say a lot in five minutes, a lot. And don't uh, think uh, for a moment that you, uh, you know, need to go off on a big uh, tangent. The best thing to do is to get the one idea, stay focused on it, and and keep it simple, as simple as you can, always. Wow, some really great questions coming in. So, um, Neyland High School has some information about those public service announcements. Um, they're saying that they should be 30 seconds to 45 seconds, and they should take 40 to 60 hours to make. Wow, that's more than one hour per second. Um, it takes a long time to make films. Um, they also were wondering how to choose a topic, so I think that goes back to what Jeff was saying earlier about something that's affected you personally, about something you're really motivated to talk about, to make a film about, which I, I can see that being very true, because if you're going to spend 40 to 60 hours making the film, you definitely want it to be something that you really find touching and interesting. Um, SHS7 has a question. Um, they say that their students have doubt about how they can be the generation that changes everything. Do we have any motivational tips for them? Um, motivational tips? My goodness. Uh, well, it put it this way, I, it's, it's up to everybody, not just your generation, and uh, it's for generations uh, that are coming up behind you as well. Every generation has their own responsibility, just like my generation and my father's generation. My, my father was an engineer, and I used to come home uh, and have dinner at the dinner table with my dad and my brother and my sister and my and my my mom. And my dad would talk about sewage at the dining room table, and that uh, it, you know. And my mom would say, "That's enough. I don't want to hear any more about that." And and uh, it, but. It sure made me think, and uh, and then my dad would take me out to sewage treatment plants, and I would see uh, sewage treatment plants, and I started having the realization that this is where this came to. When you flush the toilet, it goes somewhere, and it it is affecting somebody down the way. So when you pour oil or any kind of anything, anything that you have, you put it down the drain, it's going somewhere, and it's affecting something down the line. So when you talk about your generation, yeah, I mean, every little bit helps. And don't even think for a moment that your little bit or how small it is or whatever it is that you're doing, every bit helps, always. Next, we have a question from SHS6. They're wondering if there's research to connect the sludge on fields affecting farm animals, the meat. And I personally, being that I don't eat that much meat, I'm concerned as well about the crops that are going there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, all agricultural products. Now, uh, tests, uh, what kind of testing has been done? Uh, I didn't do any research into um, uh, meat. Uh, I just did it on the crops. But you can only imagine that if it's getting into the breast milk of women, in Sweden, that's that one particular study that I looked at in the film, um, and I know that the, the um, Canadian levels of um, flame retardants were that high at that time when I made this film, this is 2003, um, and it was accelerating. So um, it, you can only, there is no studies that I know of as I say, they could well be there right now, and they could have been done in the interim period between when I finished this film and, and now. Uh, you'd have to look for yourself. But you can only imagine what the possibilities are. So it's the most important thing is source separation, keeping the, uh, keeping the, the chemicals out of the waste stream, separating them, having their own uh, separate waste stream. Um, Chris Colvis is wondering where one can get the specs for the video production. Um, I know Adam's speaking more about uploading to YouTube later on, um, and he's also going to speak about um, technical aspects such as editing. Um, but maybe, Jeff, you can speak a little bit about that as well. 
Um, okay, now specifically specs, I, I, I'm not quite sure, but we shot it on a on that was this film was shot on a DV cam uh, uh, PD150, uh, Sony PD150, a very low budget. Um, all the all the films that I'd done up to that point, this was the first show that I'd shot on video. All the other films I'd done were shot on film on 16 millimeter, uh, and so this was very very. Uh, um, a very good, uh, you know, easy, accessible equipment and cut on Final Cut Pro. So it was very easily done. Yeah, we hope to see you at another webinar on Leland High School. Unfortunately, we don't have too many webinars that are for students and teachers. Most of the webinars that we give, like I said, are more geared towards um, engineers and things like that, but that may change. And we also do have at least one webinar in the works for teachers. Um, there is another question um, from Chris Clovis about he's presuming that any topic on the environment can be filmed. Is this so? My guess would be that as long as you have the research and the facts to back it up, you can say it and you can put it out there. Um, do you have any more information on that, Jeff? Yeah, that's incredibly important. Uh, you can't just, you know, surmise um, what is going on. You need to have the facts. When you put something out, you have to be responsible. Um, uh, you'll be put to it anyway, and it, you, you have to do. You have to be prepared for somebody, anybody, to come at you and say, uh, you know, how is this so? Um, we were actually threatened by the city of Edmonton um, because of what we said. Uh, about the um, the composting that the city of Edmonton had put together, and uh, they they threatened the the film board with a lawsuit. Um, and, but we had all of the research done, and uh, and what we said was uh, deemed um, responsible and and true. So uh, yeah, you have to be you have to be careful when you're doing that. Just do your research. Next, Rebecca is asking um, if we have any organizers or steps in terms of how to put together a documentary that would help elementary students. Well, I, I think that uh, the best thing to do with um, uh, elementary uh, students is to, again, start asking them stories about water, about um, things that they notice, uh, ways that they could maybe help to make things um, you know, better in their home as far as uh, in cleansers or, or whatever, the products that they use, and for them to imagine maybe what happens to them when they use them. And do they deteriorate? Do they, do they stay there? Do they always keep the fridge clean when you spray it? You know, is it all, you know things like this? It, it just keeps uh, it, it it keeps uh, keep them thinking, keep them thinking about it. That's all that I can suggest on that. Um, SHS8C is saying that students are wondering about the use of sludge in rural New Brunswick. Um, do you have any information specifically about sludge in rural New Brunswick? Um, no, I don't. I mean, other than um, uh, each province is different, and you have to investigate, and that would be a good project to f to find out uh, for yourself and find out what what is going on. There used to be, and I don't know any any more because I haven't kept up with it um, recently. But there was uh, a web organization called Sludge Watch, and it, it's a Canadian organization, and and um, but it might be something that you could try. Uh, the woman Maureen Riley, who's in the film, she had she had done quite a bit of research on sludges across all across North America. So um, so there's there's research available, and uh, there's lots of people out there if you start looking. Um, SHS7 is asking which pollution may be more harmful, land or water, or are they both equal? Um, I'm not sure if we could say one's more harmful than the other. Obviously, water pollution, because of the water cycle, is going to affect the land. And then
And obviously also in turn, land pollution is going to affect the water due to seepage and runoff and groundwater and things like that. Um, Jeff, do you have more to add to that? Um, I would only say that, that it, you know, there's air pollution as well. And, and again, it, it comes down to the products that we're using. Always comes down to the products that we create. There's, um, uh, you know, tens of thousands of new synthetic chemicals that are put in to uh, use in products every year. So it, those are all getting into the environment. And how they're getting into the environment is by any which way that they are introduced by daily use everywhere. So, you know, these these are the things that we need to watch. Um, it's it's the things that we do, the things that we buy, like Swiffer, this, this Johnson and Johnson. You know, I mean, this company is is crazy in that they produce so many disposable products. Um, once you have a cloth and you can use um, a homemade cleanser, uh, why would you buy something and then throw it away? Um, it's it's just thinking about what it is that we're buying and the products that we use. That's the most important thing. That's the, that's the way to control um, pollution everywhere. And I agree with Nicole that it's one isn't really necessarily worse than another. They're all they all influence each other and because this is the world that we live in. So. SHS seven has a question about any tips on how their students can pressure government, big business, et cetera, to bring about change. And I also have a follow up question to that for you, Jeff. Um after you made your film were there any changes that you saw because of your film to governments and big businesses and things like that? Um, actually, I think that the sludge policy in New Brunswick, I had heard, was affected by that. But I, I don't know. I don't have a verification on that. And those people that are asking about sludge in, in New Brunswick could well find that out. Um, and the policy here in Manitoba, I know that they've, they're have they certainly reviewing it. I don't know. I don't have any specific uh, examples that I can give you. Um, and then they also ask how they can find out when cover-ups happen at these levels, because I guess that would be very interesting to make a video that exposes those cover-ups. Um, do you have anything to say regarding that, Jeff? How can you find out about like government cover-ups and big business cover-ups? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I, I, that's a very good question, isn't it? I mean, that's what we're <laughs> trying, trying to figure out. Um, uh, big business cover-ups. Well, I mean, you know, the thing is, is you have to start talking. I mean, I. I uh, there was a friend of my son's, his dad was a truck driver, and he told me that he was ordered by his boss to take uh, truckloads of chemicals to new subdivisions and dump the chemicals, this is a liquid chemical waste, um, into sewers in in brand new uh, housing developments, just in, you know, on the street and down the sewer. Um, to avoid costs and and that kind of thing uh, from sewage treatment plants. So, um, I mean, these things are happening all over the place. You start asking, you start investigating, you start, you know, looking around. You just have to be observant and focused and, and patient and stick with it. Um, and SHS8C is wondering what the release of this video or and the increased public awareness, how has this impacted policy regarding sewage treatment? I think you addressed that a little bit before, Jeff, in the question before the previous one, um, when you said that possibly some policies have been changed in New Brunswick. Do you have anything to add? Um, no, I don't really have anything to add. I mean, you, you have to, uh, you know, we sent this film out to so many politicians. 
and uh, you have to just hope that they actually took the time to watch it. I think that if people take the time to look at the film, it just asks, it, there's questions that are, are you know, um, presented, and people need to just step back and, and, and look closely at, uh, at what's going on. Uh, yes, the Safe Drinking Water Foundation is also trying to really raise the public awareness through this film as well. Um, as probably some of you know, with every Operation Water Pollution Kit that we send out, we send a complimentary DVD of the film captured as well. Um, and then Jarvis Eco Team in Toronto is asking, with films like Crapshoot, there will always be opposition. How do you deal with it? And I, I think Jeff talked a little bit about the opposition in terms of the Edmonton municipality, and um, that you really have to be able to back up your facts. And what do you suggest we do for making an expose type film? Um, yeah, to speak specifically about the opposition, um, yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, this film, again, you know, I'll repeat once again that 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 it it really the idea behind it is source separation, not using water as a um, means to move our waste away, separating waste from water, and a lot of people really have a problem with this idea. Um, it took a lot of of uh, work and effort and thought um, to create uh, our sewage systems and our sewerage systems and to move away from them, uh, people just cannot fathom the idea. It's the same as the automotive industry, moving away from, uh, from uh, the standard fuels that we use every day. So um, dealing with opposition, you know, there's some people that you're just never, ever, ever going to convince. Uh, engineers, I find a lot of them are offended by this film because it, they feel as though it it doesn't acknowledge the efforts that they've made, and they've made huge efforts. And thank God we have sewage treatment plants. But it isn't separating out the chemicals. It's the synthetic chemicals. It's the source separation. That is the problem, and, and that... It just, you know, so anyway, so no matter how you present, there's always going to be somebody who's who's going to pull it apart, and and that's just as well. That's what I did. I got in and I pulled something apart, and somebody will pull this apart. That's how we seem to get by every day. SHS7 uh, wondering if the United Nations are aware of this video, as it is a human rights issue with humans being in the water, for example, in India. Um, this film was selected by the United Nations as part of a, um, a package of films that they screened, uh, and it went on a tour around the world um, with uh, the United Nations. And so it's it's actually promoted by the United Nations, and and um, and I think actually available through the United Nations as well. Um, so it's been extensively used by them to. To, to discuss these issues, and um, and I was pretty happy about that. Any other questions about the film or about making your own films? Um, this will be the last call for questions on this topic, and then Adam is going to show a video about uploading to YouTube and about editing videos. Okay, so I guess in that case, um, Adam, you've got the uh, floor. You can show us that video. So, Adam, um, unfortunately, our computer technician is having a little bit of uh, computer trouble, and so he is going to be typing, and I will be speaking for him. So he says that there are a number of video editors available, such as Final Cut, Adobe Premiere, I w he will be showing a video tutorial on editing videos in Windows Movie Maker since it is free and highly available. Windows Movie Maker is a simple and simple to use amateur video editor included with Windows XP, Vista, and 7. Windows Movie Maker can also be downloaded from Microsoft.com.
Hi, I'm Katie Stiles, and I'm going to show you today how easy it is to upload a video to YouTube. Make sure your video is no longer than 10 minutes in length, no larger than one gigabyte in size, and it must be in an acceptable movie format. The first thing that you're going to want to do is log into your YouTube account. Once you've logged into your YouTube account, click on the upload button right up here. Now we're in the video upload page and the first thing you're going to do is type in your title. The next step is to type in your description right here and the description is very important because it will help people find your video. Then you're going to select your video category which best promotes and suits your video from the drag down window right here. Next you're going to type in your tags right here and tags are very important because they are the keywords that people will use to find your video. You can then choose your broadcast options by clicking on choose options. Click on public if you'd like to share your video with the world or click on private if you'd like your video only viewable by your friends and family. The last step on this page is your sharing options. Again, you're going to click on choose options. This is where you can allow comments, comment voting, ratings, video responses, embedding, and syndication for your video. Now you're just about there. You're going to click on the upload a video button which is right down here. You can then click the browse button right here to select the video file that you would like to upload from your computer. Locate the file and click select. You'll see your video file right here and all there is left to do now is to click your upload a video button. Once your video has finished uploading you'll see a new page that reads thank you your video upload is complete you'll be able to find this new video under my videos and that's all there is to upload a video to youtube thanks so much for watching okay so next um adam's going to show us another video about that also if any of you make a film and i know it's going to take apparently 40 to 60 hours to make a short film so by that time you may have forgotten the steps you can go to YouTube and search on YouTube for how to upload to YouTube and watch a video, the exact same one or a similar one um, again to know the steps to upload. When you import video to your PC, Windows Movie Maker automatically segments your video footage into clips so they are more manageable and ready to edit. You can preview each clip by clicking on it and pressing the play button. You can also double click on the clip and it will also play. Once you've found the clips that you want, you simply drag them onto the storyboard in whatever order you like. To rearrange your clips, just drag and drop them to a different location on the storyboard. Once you've dragged all the clips down to the storyboard, hit play to see how they look together. And don't worry if you need to go back later and add or delete any clips. If there are clips that have footage that you don't want, Windows Movie Maker makes it easy for you to edit them further. First, click on the Show Timeline button, then click on the clip that you want to trim, move up to the Preview window, and scroll to the point at which you want to start editing. On the Clip menu, click Set, Start, Trim Point. Then go back to the Preview window. Scroll further into the clip to the point where you want to stop the clip. On the Clip menu, click Set and Trim Point. The clip is now edited to the desired length. Now you're ready to add music to your home video. Go into the Capture Video section of the task pane and click on Import Music or Audio. Navigate to the music that you want, click on it, and then press Import. Movie Maker will automatically import this song into your collections view. Click on the song and drag it to the audio music portion of the timeline. If the music is longer than your clips, Click on the right hand side of the music track and drag it to match the length of the video.
Windows Movie Maker lets you make movies like a pro with professional looking transitions. In the task pane, click on View Video Transitions. Click on a transition and press play to preview it or double click on it. Once you've selected the transitions that you like, drag them onto the storyboard in between the clips. And once you have them down on the storyboard, press play to preview your clip with the transitions included. Windows Movie Maker lets you add professional looking titles and credits just like your favorite Hollywood movies. In the task pane, click on make titles or credits. If you'd like your title to be at the beginning, click on add to the beginning. Type in what you'd like your title to say. In this case, the Scott Family Talent Show. With Movie Maker, you can also change the title animation. There are a variety of animation styles that you can choose. You can preview them by double clicking on the style and it will show in the preview window. Once you find the one that you like, you can also change the font and the background color of your title. Any font that's available on your system is also available to Movie Maker. Once you're done, click Done Add Title to Movie. And you'll see in the storyboard the title is added to the beginning of your movie. Windows Movie Maker also lets you add exciting effects to your home movies. In the task pane, click on View Video Effect. You can preview the effects by clicking on them and pressing play or double clicking on them. There's a variety of effects including aging your film, adding film grain, changing the color to grayscale, or flipping the picture upside down. Once you've selected the effects that you would like to use in your movie, simply click on them and drag them down to the left-hand portion of the clip on the storyboard. Once you've added all of your effects to your home movie, you can press play in the preview window to see how it looks. To save your movie to your PC, go to the task pane and click on Save to My Computer. Enter the name of your movie and Movie Maker will save it to the My Videos folder. Click Next. Movie Maker also recommends the compression setting that is best for saving to your computer. Click Next and Movie Maker will save your movie. This could take a few moments. Once your movie is saved, you'll have the option of viewing it immediately. If you'd like to, press Finish and the movie will play back in Windows Media Player. With Windows Movie Maker 2, you can also send your movie directly in email. In your task pane, click on Send an Email and Windows Movie Maker 2 will save your movie. Once the movie is saved, it will open your default email application and attach the finished home movie in the email. All you have to do is put a subject on it and click send. Another way to save your home movies using Windows Movie Maker is to post them to a website. In the task pane, click on Send to the Web. Enter in the name of your movie and click Next. Windows Movie Maker will automatically select the setting which is best for viewing on the web. Click Next and Windows Movie Maker will save your movie. This may take a few moments.
There are two Microsoft partners who currently offer web hosting directly from Movie Maker. Select one of them, and if you don't have an account, click on Sign Up Now, and it will walk you through the Okay, so um, perhaps we can just close that down on our screens. Does anybody have any questions that they would like to ask before we finish up? Thank you to everyone. Um, you stuck with us for over an hour and a half watching the movie and learning how to make films and edit them and all of that. So that was great. Thank you very much for participating and for all of your great questions. Um, if nobody has any more questions, then I guess we'll say have a great day and a great weekend coming up. And good luck with making your films. If anybody would like to show us the films that they have made, they can either mail them to our office or they can email them to me um, if that's possible. If the file is not too large that you can't email it, my email address is info at safewater.org and our mailing address is number 1912 Idlewall Drive North in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, S7L0Z6. That's also available on our website. I'm going to type that information into the chat window for anybody um, who needs that information. And if your video pertains to especially water or something like that, then we would happy, be happy um, as long as the facts are backed up to do our best to put it onto our website and to give your class credit. Um, anybody have any last minute questions? Um, just so you all know, there probably will be another upcoming webinar for teachers. Um, so I will be sending emails out about that one, but it will be more so for teachers to learn how to use our educational programs in their classrooms. Thank you, everyone. Um, have a good day. Uh, it looks like one person is still typing, so I'll stay around to answer that question if they have one. And otherwise, you have a great day, and um, good luck with your videos.
Hi, sorry, this is Debbie. Just came back from our lunch break. Um, obviously, I missed how to do the uh, webinars. Uh, can I still learn from watching a website? Uh, yes, Debbie. Um, the webinar will be available on our website. I will post the link into the chat again. So in a few days, you will be able to see the video. Okay, how about, uh, was there any instructions on how to make a video, though? Yes, um, there were some instructions regarding how to upload to YouTube, and there were also instructions on how to edit the video. Um, Adam will be putting the webinar video together, and I believe that he will be putting the film of Crapshoot as well as um, the film about how to upload to YouTube and the film about how to edit uh, videos all into that webinar. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks.